Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ashik and I'm from Kerala, India, and I'm one of the co-creators of Travelers University. Uh, so today I'm here to share about how uh, we are reimagining education through Travelers University uh, by offering different learning programs uh, where travel is a pedagogical tool. Uh, so we believe uh, the entire universe is a learning ground and that one can pursue one's own learning uh, through direct experiences and by traveling, uh, that one need not limit one's uh, learning space you know, within, within four walls of a school or a college or a university. Uh, so that is, that is where you know, we operate from. And um, so here is a logo uh, of Travelers University that you're seeing on the screen. And um, I think the logo communicates uh, the the principles and the pedagogy uh, that that we have at, at Travelers University. Um, so, like in each of our learning programs, uh, the the three elements that are uh, that that are there in 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 any of the learning programs include connection with one's own self, connection with people or the community around, and or, and connection with the rest of nature. So in a time where uh, largely disconnections are being facilitated, whether through uh, the education or whether through media, advertisements and so on. So this is what we attempt uh, to create, uh, spaces where one can reconnect with one's own self, spaces where one can connect with communities around and spaces where one can connect with the rest of nature. Uh, and all of us know that like we draw our nourishment and shelter uh, and support from the rest of nature. So it is that understanding is, is um, integrated in, in your, our learning programs. Uh, so moving ahead, uh, so as I shared earlier, tra travel is one of the pedagogies that, that we you know, use in our uh, programs. And second one is self-directed learning where uh, the ownership lies with the learner uh, to design uh, or to pursue one's own learning. So we offer both short-term programs and long-term programs. So the short-term ones are largely the seven to 10 days learning journeys and the long-term ones are uh, about six to eight months, uh, which currently we run a fellowship program. So in any of these programs, like as we, as a learner engages in travel, uh, the they get to meet with, uh, different communities and different uh they get exposed to different worldviews and and this is something that comes from like you no know, our own learning and life so far where uh, our worldviews our understanding of the world has been uh, or, or our perspectives have been built by our exposure to the different to to, to difference um in 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 usual situations in normal situations one is like always uh, exposed to just what is one, what one is used to. Uh, it could be one's immediate environment, it could be one's uh, school, or it could be one's college, or one works, workplace, and so on. Uh, so we encourage people to come out of those spaces that one is already used to, uh, and meet with grassroots initiatives, uh, people and communities to learn from them. And, and this exposure to different, it leads, it leads to a certain reflection and like we host uh, our own like internal processes to, to nudge the reflections of our learners. And, and that helps in building the connection, connection with one's own self, connection with people around and connection with the rest of nature. So I'll just like share a bit about two of the different kinds of programs. One is, one is the learning journeys, um, or, or yatras, as we call it. So yatra in the ancient context in India, like it is, it is largely associated with uh, journeys, journeys related to spiritual exploration or uh, self-exploration. And, and these, these yatras have largely been like slow, immersive travels around um, confluence of rivers or around mountains and so on. But in the current time, in the current context, uh, we feel there's a need to reimagine these yatras by adding more places and adding more people to, to our list of you know, areas to explore. Um, 
So I would like to share about three of the learning journeys that we that we offer. Uh, so the first one is Nila Yatra. So Nila is the longest river here in Kerala. And with Nila Yatra, we primarily explore the human river interconnectedness. We explore like what is our relationship with the river, with the water, and so on. Uh, so we meet with communities whose lives and livelihoods are directly connected to the river. Uh, for example, one of the communities that we meet uh, is, uh, is a potter community. And uh, this community, they are originally from like another state, uh, which is about like 500 kilometers away. Uh, but about nine generations ago, as they faced an extreme drought in their region, uh, they started traveling through the southern part of the country. Uh, they traveled through four different states and finally settled along the banks of River Nila in Kerala uh, because good clay was available, good uh, like water was available in plenty. Um, uh, there was a forest nearby which they could use for um, baking the clay pots and so on. Um, and... Uh, one of the challenges that that this community faced today uh, is, is is with respect to finding good clay, uh, because in the last forty years, uh, the the uh, the agricultural practice in our region has largely been chemical intensive, and then these chemicals leaching into the soil has affected the quality of the clay. Um, so something that was introduced in nineteen sixties in the name of no green revolution, which which focused more on uh, chemical intensive inputs, uh, whether it be chemical based per uh, fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, and so on. Uh, this has not only affected that respective livelihood, which is the farming community. It has taken away the autonomy and sovereignty from the farmers, and it has also affected another livelihood altogether. So it so we so we weave these interconnections through the learning journeys that we host. So this is one of the communities that we meet with during the river journey. Um, and the second uh, image that you see is that is Swaraj Yatra. So Swaraj means self-rule or self-governance. Uh, so with Swaraj Yatra, we, uh, during Swaraj Yatra, we meet with communities and organizations who operate on the philosophy of self-rule or self-governance. Um, so one of the communities that we meet uh, is, in, is in Maharashtra, and uh, this, this community is this village uh, who asserts that uh, in Delhi and Mumbai, it is a government that we elect, but in our village, we are the government. So uh, the entire village comes together. It is not just the elected representatives of the village, but the entire village comes together to make any decisions over there. Uh, and they try to operate from a hundred percent consensus. Uh, so this is one of the you know uh, unique initiatives in, in India uh, that we see. Uh, and the third uh, image that is here is that of cycle yatra, where we travel for a week on basic cycles in a group without money, without phones, without any gadgets. So the idea is to uh, explore our own relationship with money, explore our own relationship with the communities around um, and so on. So like as, as one travels without money, without carrying any gadgets or mobile phones or uh, food, there's, there's an immense possibility to establish new connections. There's an immense possibility to uh, go a little deeper into one's own self um, and so on. So the, uh, these are you know, just a few of the learning journeys that we offer. Uh, and uh, coming to the long-term programs, we currently offer a six-month-long fellowship program, which is called the 52 Parinde Fellowship, uh, wherein the fellows explore various livelihood areas that they intend to pursue in the long term. So we call these livelihoods a livelihoods, livelihoods that are oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being, uh, livelihoods that make one feel alive from within as they're involved in that pursuit. Uh, so each fellow explores uh, those livelihood areas that they intend to be in the long term. Uh, like for instance, uh, in the first cohort, we have had uh, one of the fellows exploring the area of food systems with a focus on agroecology, uh, another fellow exploring the area of food systems again, but with a focus on uh, sustainability and the politics of food, 
another fellow exploring the idea of conservation coexistence, another fellow exploring place-based learning systems, another one exploring arts-based facilitation and so on. Uh, so during the course of the fellowship, each fellow meets with around seven to eight different individuals or collectives, uh, people who are already working in those areas. Uh, they spend about two weeks with each of them, observing their work, involving their work, engaging in their work, thus building a direct learning for themselves. And during this period, uh, they also document uh, the stories of these initiatives, how they came to be doing what they're doing and so on. Uh, so through that, more people uh, have get to have the opportunity, opportunity to understand about the different uh, allied root areas that are available uh, to, one, uh, to them. Uh, so the basic I, premise. Sorry, sorry, Ashik. Just for you to know, you have a couple of minutes left. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the basic premise of the fellowship is that uh, when we look at, like in India, like why most young people still go for the same mainstream jobs or careers, it's also because they are very relatable. Um, there could be you no know, people from their own friends, family, and network who are working in those jobs or careers. Uh, but when it comes to such livelihoods. Uh, there is limited information uh, on what it entails, what the livelihood entails. Uh, one wouldn't know many people who are into such uh, livelihood areas. So through by the documentation, more people get to know about such possibilities. And we also document uh, like the a livelihood in itself, as in if someone is interested in pursuing such a livelihood, what is the kind of knowledge, skill set, and mindset that they should be building? What are the challenges and opportunities in such a pathway? And what are the resources that are readily available to us uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, so three, so through each of our learning programs, uh, we uh, encourage uh, the, the fellows or our learners uh, to explore what their relationship with the, with the different systems that they're part of or connected to, such as education, ecology, economics, politics, and so on. And through that, uh, through the self-awareness that they build, they take responsibility of their own learning and their own life. So, uh, and that is the website of Travelers University, which you may check out at ease later.